What's up guys? Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to show you how to use a sphere to subtract material out of a shape that has a bunch of different rectangles coming out of it. And we'll talk a little bit more about what the shape's actually going to look like inside of this video. But for now let's just go ahead and jump into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by modeling out basically um, we're going to call them the spines that are going to come out of our object. So to do that, we're going to start by just clicking on create sketch and we're just going to create a rectangle and we're going to call it maybe an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch. So we'll just do one divided by eight, tab one divided by eight. And I'm going to hit the enter key and that's my sketch. So now I have my sketch in here and I can extrude this up. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to extrude this up and we'll call it three inches for right now. And we're going to go ahead and leave this set to new body and we're going to click on OK. So now what I want to do is I want to create some copies of this. So to do that, I'm going to use the rectangular pattern tool. So we're going to click on rectangular pattern. We're going to select our object and then we're going to set this so that it goes in two directions. So we're going to set our first direction right here, our second direction right here. Notice that you can select directions and then click on multiple different directions. And so what I want to do is I want to set this up where it's creating a grid in both directions. So what I want to do is I want this to create 20 spines in each direction. So I'm just going to set my quantity in one direction at 20. And we're going to say this is going to be a quarter inch spacing for those. And we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to do 20 distance a quarter inch. And once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and for now, we'll leave this set on bodies. You might want to think about putting those in components, but for simplicity, we'll just leave it on bodies for right now. I'm going to click on OK. So now what I want to do is I want to create a sphere in the middle of this that we're going to use to subtract material. And so before I do that, because this could get this gets a little bit tricky. All right, and so for simplicity's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to model a sphere that removes material um, out of this object right here. And what we want to do before we do this, though, is we want to make this whole thing into a single body. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come down to the bottom, click on Create Sketch, and on the bottom here, I'm just going to draw a rectangle. So we'll draw a rectangle from here to here. And I'm going to finish my sketch. And so when I finish my sketch, what I can do is I can extrude that down. And we'll say that we're going to extrude it down maybe a quarter of an inch. Note that depending on your PC speed, um, this may take a little while. You can see how this is thinking a little bit because you have a bunch of objects in here. But we're just going to come in here and we're going to click on our distance. We're going to set our distance to negative 1 divided by 4. So basically a quarter of an inch. And we're going to leave this set on join because when we leave this set on join, what that's going to do is that's going to take this whole thing that's going to make it into a single object. And so we're going to click on OK. And so the reason that we want to do that is because it makes making our changes in the future a little bit easier. Otherwise, um, it gets a little bit tricky in here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically draw another sketch across the top to dictate my midpoint. And I've been looking for a way to dictate a midpoint um, on like a plane without drawing a sketch and I haven't found it yet. If you know of a way to do that with the construction options, leave a comment down below and let me know. But in this situation, I'm just gonna draw a sketch along the top like this. And we're just gonna draw a rectangle from this corner to this corner and we're gonna use that rectangle in order to find our midpoint. So I can just mouse over this and look for a midpoint and be careful that you're not mousing over one of these boxes because it's easy to pull the midpoint of one of these boxes instead of your overall line. Um, but you should be able to find it fairly easily and we're just gonna draw a line across here like this. We're gonna find this midpoint and we're going to draw a line across here like this. And the reason that we're doing this is this gives us a point from which we can start our sphere. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish Sketch. i rotate down a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go into Create. I'm going to add a sphere. And so remember, when we add a sphere, what this does is this asks for a plane for it to put this on first. So we're just going to click on one of these. And then you want to find this central point. You may have to zoom in a little bit to get it to inference to this point, but eventually uh, it should do that. And then we're just going to single click to create our sphere. And you can see our sphere starts really small, but we can just drag this up in order to create our sphere 
just like this. And so if you want to have a little bit more fine control over exactly where this goes, you can uh, adjust this to the top view and then adjust this in here manually. So let's say you wanted this sphere to go, um, let's say you wanted this sphere to go inside of these edges right here. You could just try like a value of four inches or something like that. And so if you type in a value of four and then you tap the tab key, this will update your sphere so that you can see where it would go. And you may need to do a little bit of fine adjustment in order to do this. But for right now, I like the way this looks. You can see how what this is doing, because we have the set and cut mode, is it's cutting all of the spines, if you want to call them that, of our object. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on OK and then take a look at what this has created. You can go ahead and turn off your sketch planes for right now. And so what I like about this is this has gone through and this has removed material where your sphere intersected with your object. However, I find that it's a little bit too tall, like we've got a little bit too much extra in here. So what I wanna do is I want to go back, and this is one of the cool things about the way the timeline works at the bottom of the page, you can go back and you can edit when you initially extruded these out to make them shorter. So for example, I'm gonna right click on this extrusion, click on edit feature, and in this feature, I'm gonna set the distance that I extruded this down to two inches instead of three, and I'm gonna click on okay. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna go back and it's gonna change that initial extrusion, then it's gonna rerun everything else just like this. And so notice, because we set our plane to the top of these objects, this adjusted dynamically along with us. So what that means is that actually came in here and this adjusted this down. Um, our sphere moved with our object just like this. And so this is a really easy way to just really quickly create a solid object um, inside of Fusion 360 and then use its solid functions in order to remove material to get a shape like this one. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Would you like to see more videos like this? Um, what kind of shapes would you like to see modeled? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.